Hello everybody, and welcome back to the long-awaited return of my longest-running series, Colorful Complexes. In the first part of this video, I'll be making cis dichlorobis ethylene diamine chromium 3 chloride. This is a fairly simple complex, but has quite an unusual synthesis. So first, we're going to start out with 30 milliliters of dimethylformamide. This is going to be the solvent for the reaction, and honestly, that's kind of odd. Typically I use aqueous solutions of metal salts and then simply add a ligand. However, this has its purpose, and let me tell you why. Typically, when making chromium-3 complexes, you can't really use water. If you do, you end up with a sort of chromium hydroxide sludge and barely any complex. However, with using a solvent like dimethylformamide, essentially removes water from the reaction, which will prevent any sludge from forming. With that being said, 10 grams of chromium-3 chloride are dissolved in the dimethylformamide. The procedure I'm following requires that half of the volume of the dimethylformamide is removed by heating, and that's what I did. With good ventilation, I should add. At this point, 5 milliliters of anhydrous ethylene diamine are measured out. According to the procedure, the ethylene diamine is added dropwise to this still hot solution. Now, this is a very bad idea, as you'll see right here. That is why wearing safety goggles is such a good idea. Getting any of that hot solution in my eyes would have really sucked. What I ended up doing instead is dissolving the ethylene diamine in an equal amount of cold dimethylformamide. Adding this dropwise to the mixture was much calmer than just the straight ethylene diamine. As more of the ethylene diamine is added, more complex will precipitate out in the form of a sort of tar material. Fear not, as it's not actual tar. Uh, where was I? Oh, right. The complex exhibits some solubility in polar protic solvents like ethanol and methanol, however in polar aprotic solvents, like tetrahydrofuran, or the solvent that we used originally, dimethylformamide, it's insoluble. So, with that being said, I can use tetrahydrofuran to precipitate out the complex. Uh, 
In this clip, you can see some residual moisture present on the glass of the filter funnel instantly dissolve some of the complex, forming a sort of dark spot. Without immediate desiccation, the complex just appears to melt. The only form in which I could get this complex to be stable as a solid was the thiocyanate. By combining a solution of potassium thiocyanate with a solution of our complex, after a while, a couple hours, this nice red crystalline powder precipitated out. Let's switch over to something a little bit spicier. When combining potassium, nickel, and six nitro groups, we end up with something orange. No, not that kind of orange. Yes, that kind of orange. We end up with a complex you've probably never even heard of before. And that is exactly why I'm making it in this video. Without further ado, let's make some potassium hexanitronicolate. Compared to the last synthesis, this one's pretty straightforward, only requiring two ingredients. However, there are a few things about this synthesis that make it a little bit tricky at times if you don't know what you're doing. So with that being said, we're going to start out by dissolving 40 grams of potassium nitrite in 15 milliliters of distilled water. This process tends to be a bit endothermic, so you may need to heat the solution. In my case, I just popped the beaker in the microwave for about 15 seconds. You don't want it too hot, but you want everything to dissolve. In a separate beaker, 10 grams of nickel 2 chloride hexahydrate are dissolved in 10 milliliters of water. Once that's dissolved, the potassium nitrite solution is added directly all at once to the nickel 2 chloride solution. The solution will darken initially, and after a couple more seconds, we'll start to see our complex precipitating out as a sort of muddy orange powder. Our product is filtered, washed a couple times with ethanol, and then dried it open air. It's important to note that you really can't wash this stuff with water, as water decomposes it. Now, let's take a look at some of the properties of this complex once it's dry. Considering the sheer amount of nitro groups that this complex contains, it's reasonable to assume that it's going to be pretty oxidizing. As you can see here, some of the filter paper which has been dried with a sort of residue of our complex on it, easily burns, and we can see the oxidizing properties of the complex quite well. Encouraged by the results of the complex with the filter paper, I decided to see what else it could react with. I decided to start out with something relatively simple, so I chose salicylic acid. Here, I simply mix the salicylic acid with the potassium hexanitronicolate and then add some heat.
Thank you so much for watching, as always. Now, I know I haven't been getting very many videos out lately, and that's because working a full-time job and only having time to work on these videos on the weekends makes it so it's kind of hard to get them out quickly. Regardless, I appreciate you sticking around, and I'll see you all in the next video.